What's going on, baseball fans? How you doing? Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Happy Black Friday. We got some baseball news tonight. The Mets are busy signing Mark Hanna, signing Eduardo Escobar. We got some Javier Baez news. My Red Sox made a move. Let's get to it. What is going on, baseball fans? Hello, hello. Happy Friday nights. It is Black Friday. Did any of you go out and do stuff today? Did you go get a new TV or a new jacuzzi or anything? Well, I mean, I didn't get anything, but uh, I usually tend to wait until Cyber Monday. That tends to be uh, my favorite day. I used to do all the Black Friday shopping. I used to wake up at, what, 4 in the morning, you know, just go walk around the mall and whatever, and then end up buying nothing. And uh, yeah, but then seeing all these people just rummage for TVs and whatever else. So I never was really the big Black Friday shopper. I would just kind of go out to go out, you know, but um, but yeah, I didn't get anything this year. Let me know if you got anything. But uh, for tonight, we have some baseball news tonight. Uh, I, I, unexpectedly, Friday nights tend not to be very busy. I remember last offseason, I feel like Friday nights, you didn't really have a lot of stuff happening, like, especially on the weekends as well, um, but a pretty busy one today, and uh, the Mets, they're all over the place tonight. They're making a couple of signings here tonight, and uh, we're going to break those down. Javier Baez, could we maybe see him on the Detroit Tigers? We're going to talk about that. My Red Sox signed Michael Waka. Very interesting. I'm going to talk about that as well um, before I do get started. Okay, there we go. There's the microphone. Sorry about that. Everyone, if you are new, hit that subscribe button. Everyone, if you can, hit that like button for me. Please, oh please, that's going to help get this stream out there. Hit the bell notification so you get notified of all the live streams in the future. And share any of the content if you can. So, uh, let's just get to it, everyone. We got a lot to talk about. So, first story of the night... I mean, we got to talk about the Mets, obviously. I mean, they're kind of, you know, it's funny with all of these stories tonight, the Mets have some kind of a connection to each of these stories tonight, but we'll talk about the one that they are mainly involved in, and that is they are signing Eduardo Escobar and Mark Canna. You know, funny enough, with Eduardo Escobar, I actually thought Eduardo Escobar was a good fit for the New York Mets earlier on this season. They were having some injuries. I thought he would have been a good trade candidate for the New York Mets. Let me actually get this music turned on for you guys. Here we go. Let's set the mood. Okay, here we go. So um, actually to prove that in case you didn't see this video, this was my uh, actually my highest viewed video of all time. Um, I made this video before the trade deadline. One trade each team should make by the 2021 MLB trade deadline. I thought the Mets should have gone after Eduardo Escobar. I thought he just made a lot of sense for them um, because he could move around. He could play other positions. They were having some injuries. He brought some power. I thought that would have been a pretty good fit for the Mets this season. And hey, they just decided to wait a few months. So hey, maybe they saw the video. I don't know. But uh, I, th I think a lot of people thought he would have been a great fit. But let's get to the story. Uh, the Mets have made the first big move of Billy Epler's tenure. And hey, good start for Billy Epler. I mean, they tried going after Steven Matz. Didn't uh, quite work out. Steve Cohen, not very happy about that. But 
Hey, this guy is busy, busy working the phones, reportedly agreeing to terms with free agent infielder Eduardo Escobar on a two-year, $20 million guarantee. So, hey, not a bad contract for Eduardo Escobar. Still pending a physical, of course. Uh, but, hey, this is a guy, he can move around. He can play a whole bunch of different spots, third base, second base, a little short. Uh, can't remember, can he play some outfield? Let me actually see. Did he play any outfield this year? Uh, let's go to Fangraphs. I always like how Fangraphs, they tell you right at the top how many, well, whatever positions they played and how many games. So he played 99 games at third base, 42 at second base. He actually played 18 at first base. He played one game at short. So hey, he's a player that can move around for the Mets. And now I wonder, does this put a damper on my prediction of them going after Chris Bryant? I thought, you know, hey, Chris Bryant would be a really good fit for this team. And they tried going after him in this season. It, it didn't quite work out for the Mets. But uh, I wonder, uh, probably not going to go after Chris Bryant, I would imagine now, now that they got Eduardo Escobar. But um, I like the move. I think it's a good move. He had himself a good season this past year. Um, you know, not amazing with the on base, but it's fine, I guess. You're going to see him drive in more runs, hit more home runs, going to hit for more pop. Um, I, I like Eduardo Escobar. I think he's a really solid player. He has that versatility. He can drive in runs for you. So 90 RBIs on the year, that's not bad at all. But it's not just Eduardo Escobar. It is Mark Canna. I think one of the more underrated players in the game. I really like Mark Canna a lot. He's not going to, you know, jump off the screen with you with the stats, but he's just a really good on-base guy. Really like Mark Canna. I thought he would have been a great fit for the San Francisco Giants. I, I mean, that was my prediction. I'm doing terrible on these predictions so far. Actually, MLB Trade Rumors, they have their leaderboards, and uh, there was one guy. Actually, let me go check on that really quick. MLB Trade Rumors, they posted their leaderboard. Uh, where is it? Uh... Where is this leaderboard? Where There's one guy on here. He had like almost all of them correct so far. Uh, where is it? Here we go. So they have a contest. I don't know if you can still enter it, but probably not. But here we go. Let me actually go here. Let's see what the leaderboard is looking, right, like, looking like. So Joseph Tantio. I, I don't think they've updated it because we just had these signings. But he had seven out of eight correct at one point. That is just amazing. I mean, good for him. I mean, me, on the other hand, I'm, I'm probably all the way down here. I think I have one right. I think I got Brandon Belt. Anyway, I digress. But um, I, I like it. I, to me, Mark Canna, I just like him as a player. I think he's just really solid. He's going to give you just really good at-bats. That's what I like about him. He really works the counts. He's just a good player to have on your team. Just a gritty player. I like Mark Canna a lot. Uh, this year, I mean, the, you're not going to get a lot of batting average with him, but you're going to get a few home runs, 17, 61 RBIs. He'll steal a base here and there. But look at that 358 on base. Really like that. Again, he's not going to provide much. He'll give you some home runs, some RBIs, but only a 387 slugging. It's not that great. But he's had some better slugging percentages in the past. In 2019, a 517 slugging. This is a really good year for him back in 2019. Hit 273. A, he had a 913 OPS. He has digressed in the last couple of years. So, I mean, granted, 2020 was a short season, but, you know, can he get it back on track here with the Mets? I mean, not bad numbers, but I mean, not great numbers either. He actually got hit by a lot of pitches this year. 27 hit by pitches this year. That led all of Major League Baseball. I think what the Mets are doing here is they're bringing in a guy, you know, a couple of guys here. Eduardo Escobar, going to give you versatility. Mark Canna, hard-nosed, gritty player, going to give you some at -bat, good at-bats. I like what they're kind of doing here, you know? couple of different looks added to this lineup still think you could do something else with this lineup I'm not quite sure what do you do with a Robinson Cano I mean do you have they even said what they're doing with Robinson Cano has there been has there been any word on that at all they're just gonna cut him or like what are they doing but uh this would push these two guys uh this pushes JD Davis and Dominic Smith to the bench as of right now at least on fan graphs that's how they have it projected um, you know, JD Davis, he got off to a really good start last year offensively, and then he just 
just got hurt a lot. And then Dominic Smith, kind of an underwhelming season for him. 2020 was looking really good and uh, just an underwhelming season for him overall. So either way, I like that the Mets are adding talent. They're going out there and they're making some moves. And what I like about these moves is that they're short-term deals. They're not getting themselves locked into these long-term deals. You know, someone like a Robinson Cano. I think it's okay if they do sign someone to a long-term deal, but I'm glad they're not going crazy. You know, a couple of, you know, a couple of deals here where they're not going to break the bank. They're going to be off the payroll in a couple of years. I, I like it. I, you're not, you're not mortgaging the future by any means. Um, I, I like these moves a lot for the Mets. I, I think they're just two solid pickups for them. I, I don't think you can hate these moves. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you guys think down below. Um, do you like these moves for the Mets? Do you like the Eduardo Escobar signing? Do you like the Mark Canna signing? Let me know uh, what you think down below in the chat. Uh, give me a thumbs up for these moves. Give me a thumbs down. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm, I'm, I'm quite curious. I'll read the chat here while you guys let me know. Um, hey, Tremont Productions. Mets need to sign uh, Javi. Get Bryant. Could they still go get Chris Bryant? I, I mean... The, the good thing about a Chris Bryant is you he can move around, you know? So could you... Now, one possibility, if you get rid of a Robinson Cano somehow, you could move Eduardo Escobar to second, and you could have Chris Bryant for third. And I would love that. I would love that for the Mets, because that gives them a ton of versatility at that point. That was one thing they did lack last year. I felt like they, they didn't just lack depth. They lacked guys that could just move around. Um, that's one thing I really do think is an underrated aspect of a team are players that can move around. Not just a utility guy off the bench, but players in your roster every day, they can go play some left field. They can maybe go play second one day, you know, whatever. Um, you're starting to see more of those kind of players now in the game. You know, guys that can play multiple positions at a high level. Uh, someone like a Kike Hernandez, he could play center field, second base. Um, but yeah, but I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up for these moves. Seeing a lot of thumbs up. Uh, Jack Schollmeyer, what do you think of Stroman to the Cardinals? And I'll actually talk about that a little bit tonight as well. Um, Stroman, I believe there was a story on him yesterday. Um, yeah, drawing widespread interest. So... Uh, let me actually talk about this one really quick since we, I mean, once again, all of these stories have some kind of a, a connection to the Mets in some way, shape, or form. So, um, but yeah, let me actually talk about this real quick. Because this happened, uh, this story came out a couple of nights ago. I wasn't live last night because it was Thanksgiving. Um, and there, there, I could have talked about this last night, but it, overall, there just wasn't enough to really talk about. But uh, Marcus Stroman is getting a lot of interest. Um and to be honest, I really think at this point, if you're the Mets, I think you gotta you gotta bring him back. You know, you got how? What do you got for starting pitching right now? You got Degrom, who's a complete question mark. Taiwan Walker, who was just awful in the second half. Carlos Carrasco should be ready by spring training. Has uh, I believe he just had a procedure done on his elbow to remove some bone spurs. Uh, Tyler McGill, not a great season last year. David Peterson, I don't know. I think you need to bring him back. You know, you have a good defense behind him. Um, what happened to that story? You got a good defense there. I think he just fits with the Mets. I don't know. That, to me, I think that's a guy they really need to bring back. So, will he want to go back there? I don't know. He's getting some interest. Red Sox, Giants, Cubs, Angels. That's where I predicted him to go was the Angels. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him go back to the Mets. So, Alrighty, let's move on to our next story here. Let me click out of some tabs here. Let's get ourselves ready for the next story. And hey, like I said, all of these stories tonight, these players have a connection to the Mets. And we just saw Javier Baez uh, with the Mets this past season, second half, and he was phenomenal for them. But now it's looking like maybe him and the Tigers could possibly be drawing closer to a contract. Could we see Javier Baez go to the Detroit Tigers? Let's go take a look at this story. Uh, Tigers, Javier Baez have had recent contract talks. The Tigers 
Uh, and free agents, uh, I cannot, talking is hard. And free agent shortstop Javier Baez have discussed a contract within the past few days. Uh, according to John Morosi, ESPN's Buster Olney adds that the Tigers are currently focused on Baez after previously talking to both Carlos Correa and Marcus Semien. I'm going to be honest, I'm a little surprised by this because in my head, Carlos Correa is the guy. You know, you know what I mean? Like, he's just the guy. Like, I, I just feel like you can build around him. Like, that's like your ticket guy like you know you're you're so close to competing you're so close to contending and and you're getting a high level player like him in a position that you need uh, to me Carlos Correa just makes a ton of sense but I really like Javier Baez as well Javier Baez he the one thing I'll tell you this past season I've never been huge on Javier Baez I like the glove I've always liked his glove um, but it was always the on base. It was always the batting average with him. I was never really high on Javier Baez. Like, sure. I like that. He has some pop with the bat, but I like guys that I would rather have a guy that can give you 25 home runs and get on base a ton than a guy who hits 35, 40 home runs, but has a 300 on base. To me, I'm, I'd rather have the guy that can, you know, make things happen on the base paths, stuff like that. But Javier Baez, he never really showed a true ability to have plate discipline. And But this past year with the Mets, it's funny, when he went to the Mets, his on-base percentage jumped up almost 100 points. I mean, that is insane. He figured something out with the Mets. Not sure what it was exactly, but... Either way, look at that on base, jumped up to 371. And that wasn't over, you know, 10 games. That was over 47 games. That's a pretty decent sample size right there. So to me, I think he's a good commodity, but he's just a good player. I think, sure, I've never liked the on base, the batting average, but overall, I've always liked Javier Baez. I mean, go back to 2019, a respectable 112 WRC plus, uh, a 131 WRC plus in 2018. That was a phenomenal season for him. Hit 290, 34 home runs, 111 RBIs, 326 on base. You would like that to be higher, but at least he had the 554 slugging. But uh, Javier Baez, I like him a lot. And again, the defense, I mean, a 4.2 defense this past year. Uh, let's take a look at the fielding as well. Uh, the advanced fielding numbers. Let's take a look. So in 2021, overall, at shortstop, he had three defensive runs saved. That's actually pretty low compared. Look at what he did in 2019. He had 31 defensive runs saved in 2019. That is mind-boggling right there. So uh, he can definitely still play some short. He played second most of the time with the Mets. He had three defensive runs saved there. So... Overall, Javier Baez with the Tigers, it's not completely out of the question for me. I mean, I think it's a nice fit. I, To me, I, I would prefer a Carlos Correa, but the one nice thing about a Javier Baez is you would be able to get him a lot cheaper than a Carlos Correa. So you would probably get Javier Baez. I don't know. I would think you would get him. Let me actually see what fan graphs. I'm going to put up a number here. Um... I would say for a Javier Baez, like six years, I don't know, 180 million. I don't know. Uh, Fangrass top 50. I can't also. I I can't math in my head, so I don't even know what does that come out to. No, that doesn't make any sense. Eight 180 over six. That's 30 million. No, that that's not gonna be good. Uh, oh, let me just see what they got here. Uh, Baez. What did they say? Four years, 20. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see Javier Baez like 25. I could see that. 22, 25 million uh, over five years. So I'd say maybe a five year. Um, I think he gets five years. I, I don't see what's wrong with that. He's only 29 years old. I could see a five year deal. Maybe like 100 million, you know, 100, 110, 115, 120. I could see something like that. With the Carlos Correa, you're going to be putting in a lot more years, a lot more money. So Javier Baez, to me, he's a cheaper option, and he's going to get a lot done for you. And uh, But I don't think it's necessarily a done 
deal here that he's going to the Tigers. I still think there's a lot there's a lot of interest out there for him. And funny enough, it's funny how Javier Baez could be off the market first before someone like a Carlos Correa, you know, because hey, he is going to be a lot cheaper. And I think a lot of teams like that. I think they see a player that can give you really solid production, maybe not as much production as a Carlos Correa, but a solid option to have at shortstop. But and also the one thing I will say this about Javier Baez too. He has been way more durable than Carlos Correa. I mean, look at the games played every single year. You can always count on Javier Baez to play. And I think that has been kind of a, you know, an aspect that's been kind of forgotten. You know, hey, if you want to help your team win, you got to be able to play. And Carlos Correa, as good of a year that he had this past year, he has not shown a consistent ability to play games. So Javier Baez has, and I think teams like that. And he's only 29 years old. So I like that a lot. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening here. We'll have to wait and see. Could he be a Detroit Tiger? We'll have to wait and see. But let me know what you think. Do you think Javier Baez to the Tigers is a good move? Uh, do you think they should go after a Carlos Correa, a Trevor Story, a Marcus Semien? Um, let me know what you think down below in the chat. Let me read the chat here for a second. Uh, Jared Cole, what's going on? Rumor has it Baez wants six over or 200 over six. 33 million per year. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. Man, oh, man. I don't know if he's going to get that. I don't see that. Uh, Chris Gallo Jr., we want Correa. Detroit wants Correa. I mean, you would think if you're Detroit, you're kind of looking for this big ticket guy. And uh, Baez feels... I like Baez. But he would feel, I think, a little underwhelming. But, hey, who knows? Um... Puerto Rican, uh, Puerto Rican boy, Javi, to the Mets. You would, I mean, hey, he was a good fit with the Mets. He had good numbers. He can play second. Um, question is, what do you do with Robinson Cano? I would imagine Robinson Cano. You know what? Let me actually see. Is there any news on him? Robinson Cano. Um, oh, interesting. He actually just had a back injury. Oh, he's, a, he's actually been playing. So... Robinson Cano's comeback has hit its first snag. Playing winter ball in Dominican Republic. Uh, lower back discomfort. Ugh. I mean, so the Mets owe Robinson Cano $20 million each of the next two seasons. Ugh. Uh, what a rough contract that is, man. That's a terrible contract. But, um, but alrighty, let's get to... Are I believe our last story of the night. It's going to be a quick one for tonight, but look at my Red Sox making something happen here. Michael Waka finalizing a contract. I mean, as a Red Sox fan, I, you know I can give my perspective on this. I'm kind of eh about it. It's fine. You know, it kind of just reminds me of uh, them signing Garrett Richards last year. You know, I think it has potential to be something. Um, I don't think it's an amazing move by any means, but I think it's just a good depth piece to have. Uh, but let's take a look at this. So overall, he you know he was more. It felt like a, it felt like kind of an opener last year. Didn't really ever go deep into games. You know, 23 starts, 124 innings. So if you do 124 divided by 23, so that's right around five innings per start. Um, ERA of 5.05, a FIP of 4.47. That's better than the ERA, but it's not great by any means. Um, his strikeouts were around nine. He doesn't walk a lot of guys. He'll give up the occasional home run. But uh, I don't know. I mean, it's whatever. Michael Waka. You know, it's funny. Last year, when he signed with the Rays, even before he signed with the Rays, I thought he had potential to be like a a, a very under the radar free agent signing, like a you know a, an underrated free agent signing. He wasn't bad with the Rays by any means. He had some good moments with the Rays, but I don't know. I just don't think it's really anything. I, I think at this point, Michael Waka is just more of a name. I think he's just he is what he is. I mean. 
he's going to give you innings. That's the one thing with Waka is he's pretty much he's been durable for the most part in his career. He's ne I mean 2018 he missed some time. But other than that, he has been pretty durable. Hasn't really you know, lately he just hasn't really given you a lot in terms of production. But uh we can go to baseball savant here and take a look. So with a Michael Walker, you're going to get five pitches. So that's one thing about him that's always been pretty good. He can mix up his pitches pretty well. Uh, but if we take a look here, this past year, I mean, there wasn't really much going on in terms of run value. His four-seamer was okay, but his cutter was bad. He's trying to experiment with that cutter, and it just hasn't really been a great pitch. I mean, but go back to 2018, you know, it was good that year, but this year, give a 12 run value. That's just not good. But uh with a walk, if we go take a look at the uh at the expected home runs. Oh, are we still here? Oh, what the why is Siri on my iPad doing this right now? Are we still here? So I don't know what I said, but it activated Siri on my iPad. Uh, oh, Joshua Kesserwan, what's going on? Four ninety nine super chat. Uh, I prefer Seager uh, instead of Correa for the Tigers, but it seems Detroit fans don't want him. You know, Corey Seager is one of these. To me, he's an interesting player. Um, you know, because he's another one. I mean, he's had his moments where he hasn't been able to stay on the field, but uh, he's a good lefty bat. People wonder if he's is he even going to stay at short you know he's going to move to third at some point down the road so that's where i think you know i don't know i, I just wonder I, he hasn't really shown like the best defensive numbers at shortstop they've been okay they've been fine he'll get the job done but um i could see carlos correa is kind of more of that all-around kind of a player where i look at Corey seager as more of like a when you think of seager i think of offense right i don't think of defense with him when i think of carlos correa i think of an all-around game when he's healthy. Javier Baez, I see a, uh, from what I've, you know, gathered of Javier Baez over the years, I see a guy with a great glove, but he can really hit for some pop too. So Corey Seager, I look at as like a, just a solid offensive player. He's going to hit the ball hard. You know, he's going to get you home runs. He's going to get you extra base hits. He's just a good guy to have in your, a great guy to have in your lineup. So I think for the Tigers, I think your Tigers fans want Correa because He's just an all-around good player. So, uh, Joshua, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate that. But Michael Waka, um, expected home runs. He's at 26 uh, if he was at Fenway Park. So, I mean, <laughs> not good. Um, if we take a look, his velocity, it's been pretty much around the same. You know, maybe dropped off a little bit after 2017. But uh, if we take a look at his... Uh, at his pictures here. Four Seamer had some good life on it. Uh, the curveball was pretty good this year. Well, one, the one thing with Heim Bloom is he's very good with the data. He's very good with the analytics. So maybe he can figure something out with a Michael Waka. Garrett Richards ended up being really good in the bullpen for the Red Sox. So maybe Michael Waka can have some kind of a role in that way uh, with Boston. Have to, you know, maybe he has a, an idea for him. You know, and but most of all, he's gonna be cheap. He's not gonna be expensive. And you know, Heim Bloom, he loves a nice bargain. Heim Bloom, the bargain hunter. So, uh, but yeah, have to wait and see how this goes. But everyone, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I didn't want to take too long tonight. It's a Friday night. Um, I'm actually working on a video at the moment. Actually, just finishing it up. Um, I'm definitely planning on getting a couple of videos out next week, along with live streams, as always, next week. Um, but I'm going to get out of here. If you can, hit that like button for me for before you get out of here. Uh, that way it gets this out to more fans that weren't able to come in tonight. So, uh, everyone, again, hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, if you had you know, any sort of a shopping experience today for Black Friday, hope that went well. Hope, you're, hope you got yourself a deal at some point today. But uh, if there is anything to report over the weekend, I'll be here. Uh, but if not, I will see you on Monday. But uh, have yourself a good weekend, everyone. Uh, get some rest tonight. Get some exercise this weekend. Go have a good meal. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk to you next time.